Hey, I'm William Hahn. I want to talk to you today about making stories with your iPhone. Short video stories that really get across to your audience where you live, the people you interact with, the places you see, and the work that you're doing. Our iPhones are incredible. They shoot great, smooth video. They pick up great audio. And so with just a few tips about storytelling, you can really pack a lot into short stories. So the best thing to do is to show, right? I'm going to show you three stories that I've shot just around my area and uh, all with my iPhone. And then afterwards, we'll talk through what is in the stories and some tips that you can pull out of that to help make your little video stories better. All right, let's go. So here in Northern Ghana, we don't have grocery stores where I live. We actually have a market, and the market isn't even every day, it's every three days. So I'm gonna go to market, because I need to pick up some things. So let's go, ride along. All right, here we go. Me and my driver. So despite the chaos of this place, there's actually order to it. So the market is divided into sections and people sell different stuff in the different sections. And so we're coming into the veggies section here. All right, so that's our crazy, hectic market. I'm gonna hitch a ride home in this rickshaw. See you guys next time. Hopefully you noticed that story had a beginning and an end. The beginning, I told you what we were gonna do, we're going into the market, and then at the end I kinda wrapped it up and said that's it and we're going home. So that's one thing, I had a little bookends on the story. I also took you on the journey with me. I showed the rickshaw, that experience of going in the rickshaw. Um, I showed you walking through the tight kinda alleyways in the market. The other thing I did was I had a lot of short clips that just showed short glimpses of things. The market is a very overwhelming experience, and hopefully that captured a bit of that. You kind of felt like you were seeing all this stuff, and a lot of it you didn't even know what it was or what it was for. And then I interrupted the story about halfway through, right, by giving a little context on how the market was organized and where we were in the market. So hopefully at the end of that just 60 second video, you felt like you had experienced something with me and really become more interested in the people and the places. Notice I also showed some faces of people. Again, that was intentional. I want you to connect with some people that I'm interacting with in this place. So now we're gonna go back to the market, but in this video, it's gonna be a little shorter and we're gonna kind of dive into a specific detail and a specific story within the story, all right? So let's go on this next adventure. One of my favorite snacks in northern Ghana is wagaji, which is basically fried cheese. It's kind of like feta cheese, and they deep fry it. So good. That's the raw cheese. They got soaked in there. And they take the raw cheese, and they fry it. Get it nice and brown and crispy. Put it on the platter, and everybody gets to enjoy it. Now, for those who are not faint of heart or stomach, you can also get hot sauce. But let me tell you, that stuff tears me up. Mm, so good. So good. It's crispy. It's salty. It's hot. It's amazing. Amazing. Did that make you hungry? Hopefully with those little 45 seconds, it really piqued your interest into what the wagaji, the fried cheese, tastes like. Now, if you think back to the video, you'll notice I opened with what we call an establishing shot. It was a wide shot that showed the women and they were buying the cheese, but at that point you didn't know what it was. And that's when I brought in my little selfie video and I talked about the fried cheese. And notice this is the kind of story where I went through step by step and explained the process of how they make the cheese. You saw the raw cheese, you saw the frying, you saw the final product, right? Try to add a little humor with the hot sauce that I said would tear me up. Um, and then in the end, you just saw me eating the stuff. That's kind of the bookend, right? It ends the story. But that's a way you can just really take something specific in your day and hone in. 45 seconds showing this is what I did, this is how it's done, and then wrap it up. Really quick, really short, going on. So the next story is going to be a bit longer, 60 seconds again. So have a look at this, and then we'll talk about it. Hey, I'm William. My wife Heidi and I serve here at the Baptist Medical Center in Northern Ghana. I'm going to take you into the hospital and we're just going to pop in there and see what she's up to today. Let's go. Heidi's in there probably doing surgery, but a couple things you have to do first before you can go into the operating room. 
Got to get some scrubs and a shirt and get some clogs to put on. Now I'm putting on my cap so I can go in there and see my wife. I bet a lot of you don't have to go through all this mess to go see your wives. How's the work? Last two stitches, hey. We won't get any closer. Heidi has been in that case for nine hours. So I just thank God for giving her the stamina and the skills to do that. Thank you guys for your support. Um, that's what allows us to be here and make a difference in people's lives by doing cases like that. So God bless you, see you next time. I hope that after seeing that video, you actually feel like you know me and my wife and the work that we do a little bit better. You've seen exactly what she does. That video started off with a short introduction, and I don't know if you remembered, but behind me, I intentionally framed the hospital behind me so that you could see what I was talking about. And then I took you in, again, bringing people along with you into the story. We paused outside the operating room so you could get a feel for that, and then you saw the process of what I had to go through and even saw the door open and I went into the operating room. That video I also ended with a short little thank you blurb directly to the audience where I was thanking them for their support. And that's really the whole point of these videos. When you do these short videos, you really engage people. They not only become interested in what you're doing, but they feel like they're a part of it because they went along on the journey. And all it takes is your smartphone. This whole video that I'm shooting right now is also shot with my iPhone. I'm just walking through a field near my house and I'm holding it and talking directly to the lens. That's one of the tips. You need to get used to looking at the lens because it makes eye contact with the audience. If I'm looking at the picture of me on screen, it looks really weird because I'm off to the side. You notice in a lot of these videos, you heard my voice talking as I showed what I was filming and you never saw my face in those parts. You can do entire videos without showing your face and it can be just as effective when people can hear your voice explaining what they're seeing and the significance of it. I hope this has inspired you and motivated you to get out with your smartphone and start shooting some stories to tell people about what you're experiencing, what you're seeing, and what you're doing in your part of the world. We look forward to seeing your videos. Get out there and start shooting.